Günaydın dünyaya. <laughs> Günaydın üniversitesi. Um, it's a great pleasure and honor to be here in Turkey and Istanbul, um, a real world hub. I have uh, made uh, several uh, visits to Turkey and every time it's um, an opportunity to learn something, to learn more, to become a better person. This time as well, I hope this webinar will take us all to the next step in our building accessibility agenda, not just in Turkey, but also in the world. I also welcome all of our Zoom uh, participants. Thank you for finding time to join uh, our discussion. Thank you, dear colleagues uh, from Istanbul Grand Airport, uh, uh, and Kadir uh, Bay. Um, with um, Istanbul Grand Airport, as um, Hilal already mentioned, we started, um, and other partners as well, started a project that you see right now on the screen, in Club Inclusive Aviation. And during my contribution, I will guide you through the uh, rationale behind this project and share a few um, developments that we um, have um, accomplished already during this time. Um, the, the oh, okay. I have to use my voice more. Okay, I'll do that. I'll, I'll be more, you know, putting my voice across. Well, uh, here in Turkey, as we compare the um, two um, areas of the world, the Middle East and the um, European Union. Um, we are happy to acknowledge that the work on accessibility has been going very strongly. Um, if you look at this slide, you will see that uh, both the world authorities and the European Union authorities have set up a lot of initiatives uh, to enforce the legislation so that the uh, infrastructure that we're using today in travel and tourism and in other industries as well uh, becomes indeed accessible, not just on a theoretical level, not just on the level of uh, policies and recommendations and guidelines, but also in reality. That means every person who lives, works, takes part in societal activities has um, guarantee that all of these activities will um, be equally accessible. With that thing in mind, uh, when we were planning the project, we identified uh, four rationales, so to say. So the first one we already mentioned that it's not just a possibility, it's a legal requirement to provide e access to equal or equal access to opportunities uh, to create an inclusive society. And I'm very happy to say that our colleagues in Turkey have done fantastic work and I, I strongly um, welcome people to come to uh, Istanbul and other places, Izmir for instance, and to see the best practices that we can learn from. Second, um, as we've been working on accessibility project planning, we saw that um, aviation industry in particular has a very strong shortage of um, human resources. Staff is very much needed, especially now after COVID when the industry is finally picking up. Um, all of the occupational groups struggle to fill in uh, job positions with new fresh graduates or with um, professionals already seasoned. So when it comes to staff and staff training, we also feel um, after doing a very significant review of the programs that um, the training programs are not um, deep enough to provide uh, an overview of accessibility topics for various occupational groups. And that creates skills gap, as you see here. So many of the professionals who come and join teams um, in aviation organizations, they may not have the awareness, they may not have the competences, and they may not have practical skills that are required in order to provide seamless experience for every passenger, every customer. Um, and as our colleagues from Istanbul Grand Airport showed, they are constantly day and night working on uh, ensuring that such skills exist and that the experience of every passenger is indeed smoothness. And the fourth rationale for creating a project with European funds is that 
aviation organizations these days do not have uh, enough resources to uh, focus on, on the training uh, to provide the state-of-the-art learning experiences. Uh, for every learning um, that an employee takes, that employee is removed from the operations, let's say, and that creates an additional cost. So we wanted to create um, a deliverable a training uh, on inclusive aviation that would contribute to aviation's organization's profitability in a sense that it will not be a huge cost for them. Um, this is, in a nutshell, what our um, project in Klavi aims to um, deliver. If you look here, so um, a database of best practices from around the world um, in coupled with policy recommendations for various regions. And we started working on collecting these best practices. And as you have seen already, Istanbul Grand Airport is a fantastic source of, of best practices. So by the end of the project, all of those fantastic things that Hilal was mentioning, um, including best practices from um, aircraft operators, from ground handling, from third parties, could be summarized, put together in a um, easily accessible um, uh, sort of um, source for other stakeholders to use. We would hope to build up a training program, as we call it, um, curriculum, um, that would um, focus on a very comprehensive um, view of disability and a very highly segmented customer journey. And the curriculum would be available um, as a mobile, uh, friendly, um, accessible um, platform where learners could enroll and study accessibility topics on the go. Both university students, and I'm, I'm sure we've been um, uh, already having discussions uh, across partners so that, for example, in Ozin University, um, students here would be able to take these courses uh, very uh, easily and make them part of their curriculum. As well as employees, let's say, the Istanbul Grand Airport could make it uh, part of their professional um, developments. These are our partners. I'm very proudly presenting to you this beautiful consortium um, funded by European Commission. So you have um, uh, quite a strong presence. We have strong presence in Turkey. You see Istanbul Grand Airport, Yashar University, and that is located in Izmir, uh, and uh, Ozuin University that is located on the Asian side of the Istanbul. Apart from that, we have a few more um, institutions, um, educational institutions, uh, Breda University in the Netherlands, Kareria Vocational School in, in Finland, and Haga Helia, uh, where I come from, University of Applied Sciences in Finland. <laughs> then we have our industry partners that are uh, very strongly committed to the accessible aviation, inclusive aviation, International Air Transport Association, and IATA from Spain, a European Network for Accessible Tourism, uh, headquartered in, in Belgium, but working all across the European Union. We have uh, also um, Air Baltic. Uh, it's a medium-sized airline from the Baltic region, uh, headquartered in uh, Riga, who um, are our associated partners. Uh, our um, airport operator in Finland, Finavia. And then we have a Finnish association of uh, travel agents. Uh, that provides us with insights into the work of travel agents who work in them um, um, with all kinds of passengers. So altogether, our consortium is um, provides uh, a nice bridge between industry and the academic world to work on the accessibility solutions and the training. So in other words, if we work at the Inclavi, uh, we aim to change the training of aviation staff and to make sure that more specific, more concrete, less evident topics and subjects of accessibility are easily uh, introduced into aviation training. Usually, if you look at, at the training and what people do, they may increase the awareness about disability, they may um, provide review of uh, existing legislation, and perhaps introduce people to some best practices. Um, we found that uh, in such training, um, as I said, these less evident, uh, more um, granular topics are not introduced. So if you think about all of the scope of available human conditions, both physical and mental, so it's quite um, a, a database of subjects that needs to be introduced in order to master them all. Um, 
who would be um, taking um, learning paths and studying this subject with us. Our group, as we um, work on this project, is quite diverse. Uh, there will be several levels for um, different experts, so beginners, intermediate, perhaps advanced. So we're right now working on the curriculum structure, um, both aviation experts and staff from these stakeholders. And then, as we said, the students um, who are aiming to find employment in the aviation industry or tourism industry. As well, we think, we hope that uh, some of the travelers with disabilities or their families might find this curriculum useful in order to be better prepared for, for the travel in some cases, perhaps. Um, as um, curriculum will be open, access uh, will not be a commercial product. So we hope to attract a very large population also on the testing base. Now, a bit more because I come from the University of Applied Sciences and I'm interested in the pedagogical side of this curriculum. We um, are planning now first pilot modules together with partners. And in fact, I spent uh, about a month in Turkey in, uh, in summer. So with our colleagues from Yashar University, we worked on a few prototypes for the curriculum. The coach and I, um, I think tomorrow um, we will meet in Istanbul Grand Airport with colleagues from IGA Academy and we'll benchmark the thoughts of how pedagogically the, our approach could become stronger. So if you think of a typical learner, let's say um, um, in our case would be perhaps a flight attendant or perhaps a check-in agent or perhaps a university um, student who would like to become um, a manager in, uh, in an airport, or it could be a vocational student who would like to become a travel agent. So we have a diverse group. So our goal is that after taking several modules from our um, inclusive Asian curriculum, they would be able to explain and summarize on their own uh, accessibility requirements that exist for different service points. We would hope that these students or learners would be able to uh, know and describe best practices in the industries for the service that they are in charge of, say, and to have a, a good knowledge how these best practices can be implemented. And they would be able to assess, evaluate uh, their operations, and they would be able to uh, evaluate the need for um, application of this or that accessible solution. So in the end, when the learner studies the topics um, and come back to their work life, um, they would be able to lead the change from within the industry. For us, it's very important that the curriculum doesn't remain um, a database of content somewhere there. We, we hope that um, people will really take it um, into work. Um, that's why from IGA's um, support, we will work on a mobile interface that um, employees can learn these topics on the go. You will not need to uh, spend months and months in a course to uh, become an expert on um, inclusive aviation, but you could perhaps learn an hour a day or 30 minutes a day and, and get updated about this or that topic. Um, my dear colleague Hilal already showed you the complexity of um, aviation um, journey. Uh, for people with disabilities and how many, let's say, service points exist from the moment of uh, planning the journey, booking the trip, getting in touch with the airport, getting in touch with the airline, uh, arriving at the air terminal, entering the terminal, proceeding to the check-in, um, let's say, uh, working with your equipment or with your baggage, going through the security check and so on. So there are a lot of this, all of this complexity. And then the passenger types, you know, Mr. Karim Hilal probably will mention segmentation a little bit later, how important it is for stakeholders to be able to understand uh, uh, the complexity of segmentation. So with our Inclavi um, curriculum, we hope to, to have enough modules to cover all of those topics, all of this. So in a way, if you're interested, for instance, in the uh, peculiarities of uh, providing uh, in-flight meal to a blind passenger. So perhaps some information could be found there. And then again, if you would like to find um, uh, um, content on accessible bathroom in the airport, again, in our curriculum, you would find that information. 
or if you'd like to know how to organize book, uh, group travel for accessible athletes through a travel agency, there could be some guidance there as well. Um, moving on, um, so I will show you a few images from the airport and you would see that, yes, these are the variables at least at the airport that become important shown the security. And since Hilal talked about this, I will not focus. Just what I want to say that uh, predominantly safety and security is a, a very strong element of the Asian industry. And a lot of progress in accessibility cannot be achieved because we also want to guarantee safety for all. And if we push certain practices um, into the operations for accessibility, it needs to go in harmony with the safety and security. Um, airports are, are very busy <laughs> environments. And uh, also the way the work in the airports are, is organized through subcontractors and third parties also becomes complex. So it is a fantastic example. For example, you have, I think about 14 feedback channels, right? And uh, 19. 19 already, congratulations. And then you have how many suppliers and, and the third suppliers that, that provide the services. And so very complex environment. Um, this is, for example, the complexity of, of a journey from the um, air, airline perspective. So once you go through the airport, you get to the, to the airline, you can glance yourself through this timeline, um, which was a few years ago uh, practiced in um, another airline, our Nordic-based airline, where I come from. So think from the perspective of a disabled traveler. So all of these service points, they need to be formulated, perhaps, um, in a more individualized way. And then from the perspective of the aircraft design also, there are a lot of um, complexities and, and limitations uh, that have big relevance for accessibility. Luckily here in Bolt, you could see that now airlines have become very active in uh, negotiating and talking to the aircraft manufacturers in order to adding more and more features that are technically possible. Uh, perhaps costs are becoming less of an issue these days because there have been a lot of cost um, optimization and maybe also from the branding perspectives. I hope we will come to a um, to the world of aviation where airlines will be proud to actually positioning themselves as a more inclusive, more open, more accessible um, airline, providing more accessible airline experience. Because EGA definitely, Istanbul Grand Airport already has done it a lot and you've been branding yourself as a, an accessible airport. In your case, it has paid, right, the costs. So a few more slides I have left um, and cut me off, Luis, if, if I go over the line. So, um, one, one important point for, for our curriculum as we develop the subject is empathy map uh, suggested by our colleagues from Yashar University. So we would like to, to the learners to, to have um, a more personal uh, connection with the passengers that represent this or that disability group. So we'd like our learners to, to know what usually um, Passengers say what they think, what they do, and how it feels for them. So what they say, what they think, what they do, and what they feel for them. If professionals are equipped with this empathy, with this, they, they can perhaps be more um, tuned to the um, service from their side, from the empathy. So if you think of a touch point, Let's say we're talking about in-flight meal or we're talking about the um, checking or we talk about the uh, going through the security check. There will be certain disability types that are very relevant for the service. And there will be certain disability types that are not relevant because people can be independently without any extra support pass through that service. So our curriculum would make that distinction. And Luis, with your patience, I'll show you a few, a few, few one, one slide that how we worked for, for example, using a um, bancomat, an automated teller machine at an airport, certain disability types become more relevant for that type of service, while others perhaps 
not much. Let's say autism may not be relevant for using a bancomat, right? But but let's say a wheelchair becomes relevant. So in that sense, we would like to filter and try to understand which service, which disability types are more or less relevant. So once we do that for each module, then uh, we will um, guide the learners to understanding how the service is accessed by these disability types, how the service is operated, and then uh, what is the way to evaluate the experience of the passenger and collect the feedback, in that sense. I think I will um, uh, stop very soon. So this this is the one, how, how a module could look like. So if you think of um, you going in mobile interface, you open the curriculum, you, a flight attendant, you open up a certain um, content, there, you will have a text that tells you about the unit. Maybe it will be 20 minutes learning. Then you get a small presentation, maybe a video or a interactive PowerPoint that will have a summary. Um, maybe we'll have a support for disabled learning with audio, let's say. And then uh, for further links, if you wanted to deepen the learning and the self-assessment quiz. To say, um, to say a bit more, then our curriculum will be certified we would hope to um, issue certificates that are recognized widely across the industry and also across the education. With that, I thank you and apologize for the overtime. We have many of you either as learners of Enclavi modules or perhaps as contributors and uh, helping us pilot them. Thank you very much.